Hi, I'm Weston. I love talking about the Rangers, and I'm here to talk about Game 6 of the Eastern Conference Finals, where the Rangers lose 2-1 to one to the Florida Panthers and are eliminated. The Florida Panthers now head back to their second consecutive Stanley Cup Final appearance, where they will take on either the Dallas Stars or the Edmonton Oilers. Rangers put up one goal while facing elimination. Uh, and for the first 58 minutes of the game, they put up zero. It was until Igor Shosturkin was pulled in their desperate attempt with less than two to play that they finally got on the board. The first Panthers goal was a Bennett Ringer. Just a beautifully placed shot. Awful, awful defense by Jacob Trouba on that play. And the second goal was awful, awful defense by name a player, name any player. Uh, bad defense by Miller. Bad defense by, I want to say it was Loft back there. Panarin made a bad play at the blue line in the offensive zone. It was bad defense all around. Tarasenko was left wide open. Shesterkin did everything a human being could do to stop the puck. And it wasn't good enough. And that's that's the whole thing. That was that's if I had to pick one play to talk about to talk about the series, it's big star offensive side of the puck. Uh, can't do it. Shesterkin does literally everything you could ask for him. Everything you could ask for him. And it's not good enough. That game sucked. That series sucked. And it sucked for... Here's the biggest thing. And uh, if you're looking for a deep dive for the play of this game in this series, not going to be this. I'm an emotional guy. I, I, I talk about how I'm feeling and my side from a fan for the series. This is all my emotion for the game. I, the Rangers... I am not even going to say the Rangers played terribly this series. I think they just got outplayed. I don't think that this is anything that you can just squarely lay at the feet of the Rangers. I think it is the Panthers knowing how to play playoff hockey. Knowing how to win right now. Knowing how to shut down big time players. And doing it. I said in October. From game one. I said that the Eastern Conference was a competition of who gets to lose to the Florida Panthers. And dude. Not that it was a hot take from my account. But it's what happened. They faced the lightning. The the. The incredible pedigree of champions that is the Lightning. Beat them in five. They face the Boston Bruins, who have a massive upset. Not upset, but a massive, you know, momentum. Swing in game seven where they win in overtime to win their first round series. All the reason in the world to want to stick it to the Panthers. Losing six. And then they face the President's Trophy winning New York Rangers, and they win in six. And I don't think there was a single game where the Rangers, from start to finish, outplayed them. Every single category, except from debatably goaltending, the Panthers outplayed the Rangers in. Offensive, defensive, special teams, physicality, everything. The Rangers were second in everything. And not an embarrassing in second. I think the Rangers built the best regular season team this season. And I think that because they won the President's Trophy. And a lot of different times, a lot of different ways, they looked like the best team in the regular season. But I think they had the second best constructed playoff roster. And the unfortunate thing about that is you play in a conference with the best built playoff roster. And so I think it is an incredibly legitimate opinion to have that you look at it and go, what would you have done differently? 
you had a great goaltender, you had a good defensive core, you had a good offense, you had a great special teams unit through the first, God, 4, 10, like 13 games, power play looked good, penalty kill looked good. You built a really, really good team. The Rangers had a really, really good team. Sometimes it winds up that there's a team that's just better. I think the most damning thing you can take away from it is that they couldn't will themselves. And I'm not talking to win a series. You couldn't will yourselves to outplay a team for a game. That's the most damning part of it. If, they're, if they would have lost in six, but in game three, instead of it being an overtime winner, or in game two, instead of it being a nail-biting overtime winner, if they would have just mopped them, like 5-1, where at least you can say, well, they can do it, and outwilled, an opponent, outwilled the Panthers in just one game, I think it would be a different conversation, but they couldn't. They didn't have the willpower. And the big guys, the big players that you pay a lot for didn't show up in the series. I understand Panarin had the only goal in this game. Who cares? It came way too little, way too late. He had a goal. Mika. God, Mika. Like, could have tied it early. Didn't have a stick on the ice. That's not, that, that's just fundamental. Keep your stick on the ice. You had Fox, who just did nothing except look kind of mad defensively. Truba is a disaster. Um. Like, and here's the thing. Laviolette came in and was a good coach. I don't think you can have any debate that Laviolette wasn't a good coach. And now you come to that super fun part of it where the team has had, debating on how you want to look at the core, uh, two and or three head coaches. Because the Panarin, the Mika, the Kreider, the Truba, the Fox, at least for a year or a couple years, had uh, David Quinn. And then you had Gerard Gallant. Now you have Laviolette. Now Laviolette is a lot better than either of the other two. Laviolette actually has a Stanley Cup. But the team couldn't do anything. He got the most out of the guys that you needed him to get the most out of. The guys that I feel it is in his ability to affect, he affected. Uh, Lafreniere had his best season of his career. Like, bar none. Trocek had the best season of his Rangers career. Not that it's been very long, but it was that was the Trocek we wanted. Um, I thought he got a lot out of the bottom half. I thought he did great as the head coach. It's on the players now. Like, there is no reality right now where you can convince me to run it back with this core. Uh, someone's got to be moved. I think at minimum one. Like... Truba's got to be gone. And then you can have the debate on if you run it back with the main offensive guys of Kreider, Mika, and Panarin. Which I can be convinced of that. Uh, what I can't be convinced of is to have Jacob Truba on this roster for the opening night next year. Just, no. We are, we're done here. And I'm, I've been one of the biggest Jacob Truba supporters. He is not worth the $8 million anymore. And more than that, he is not worth the liability that he was this postseason. Uh, both in terms of the dumb penalties and in terms of the just not good enough defensive play. That's your captain who is blowing assignments in an elimination game that leads to a goal. Trying to lay a hit on a person who I don't even think at the moment had the puck! Like, it, you're, you're done. It's over. Uh, and the added benefit of trading Jacob Truba is that you get money because you're not paying him. You could probably convince a team that's like young or supposed to be bad to take him so they have leadership. 
And, like, you might be able to even get something back aside from just the cap space. Uh, and more than that, you get to send a very important message to the locker room, which is, hey, it's your fault. You did it. You caused it. You got the captain traded because you couldn't do anything in the playoffs. And I know it's, uh, I know it's rich of me to say couldn't do anything in the playoffs when you lose in the Eastern Conference Final, but, dude, it wasn't that you lost. It was that you lost like that. I think you got to move them. I'm fine with keeping... I think Kreider staying around is a given. I think you... If I were to map out the offseason and talking about only the players that are on the roster right now that you can keep or trade and not going for other free agents or trades, I think you'd trade Truba. I'm fine with keeping Panarin and Mika and Kreider, but then you also got to give Kreider the C. I think it's been insane that he didn't get it. And I was on board with the Truba thing, but then time progressed, and I'm like, you know, probably should have been Kreider from day one. Uh, it makes too much sense not to. He's the only one that cared this postseason. He tried. He didn't always get anything for it. He didn't score. I don't think he had a point in this series, which is insane that I'm defending it. But, dude, at least he cared. At least he cared. That was such a nonchalant game for a team that had Stanley Cup ambitions. For a team that started 7-0. and To go out like that in the series where you don't outplay your opponent for maybe a single period. And then to play such a just miserable Game 6. That's the whole thing. I'm, I'm, I'm upset in terms of it's another playoff series where the big guys didn't get it done. I'm more so disappointed. They had it. They had everything that you could need to win a cup. They really, really did. This wasn't the 21-22 run where they were so young and they barely knew anything about the playoffs. Their experience as a group was some of them were there for that weird little qualifying round where they got their just can handed to them. Like, they had it all. They had a really good first line. They had an unbelievable second line for the first two series. You had a really good third line with depth. You had a fourth line of grinders. Your defense was pretty solid going into it. I really thought they were good enough. You had Igor Shosturkin who played out of his mind again. Again. Was the best player on the ice this series. Maybe for either team, but easily for the Rangers. You had everything you needed. Everything you needed. To win it. And that's, that's the thing. Like, when they lost to Tampa, I was able to look at it and say, well, they're too young, and it's the Lightning. The Panthers are a force in nature. I'm not going to take that away from them. They had everything they needed. They had everything they needed to go win the Cup. And to go out with a whimper like they did is just... It hurts a lot. It's so incredibly disappointing. Also, the big thing is you've got to keep Shesterkin happy. Um, he looked devastated, and I don't, I don't blame him. He played a great game. This could have been like a five-one game, very, very easily, or five-nothing even, because maybe they don't pull him to get the extra attacker. He held him in it. And you've got to pay him more money to keep him happy. Because I do not believe that he would look at the history of this team and what they did to Henrik Lundqvist and just go, yeah, I want that fate. I want that fate where in 10 years from now my final game is some weird playoff series where 39-year-old Igor Shosturkin 
is still somehow the best player on the team when a crop of young guns can't do anything. It just hurts. I really don't know what else to talk about for this game or the series. I mean, when they beat the Canes, I thought they could. I really did. Because I respected the Canes a lot. I thought they had a really good team. And you know, you almost swept them. You had to, you had to, to pull a comeback in Game 6 to beat the Canes, but you did it. You did it! But now with the Panthers... You were simply outclassed. And you can be upset, and I don't think you're wrong to be upset. But I look at the Rangers, and I see a team that is the second best team in the Stanley Cup playoffs, and a team that is the second best built team in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And very unfortunately for them, they ran into a team that's probably going to go win the Cup. And that's it. The Rangers offseason begins. And there's no more Rangers hockey until September or October. Which means this little thing is probably has very little left, very little time left before I'm back to the uh, Top Gun look. So there is no next game in sight. That's it for the season. Uh, obviously, these are the more niche video on here. But I do greatly appreciate everyone who's watched along the season. Whether you're Astros fans who watch a little bit of hockey and want to see what's happening from a Rangers perspective. If you're Astros fans that just like my Astros stuff and want to come see this and maybe I've converted some of you into hockey or Rangers fans, which are kind of... That's like my favorite little part of it is that I know from people talking to me that there's like a very small sect in Houston now that's like Rangers fans, which is the funniest part of anything to me. Uh, or maybe you're Rangers fans who've found this and just been like, man, that's really weird that this Astros channel also does Rangers stuff. But this is, it's my little niche pet project and I appreciate everyone who watches the videos for the season. And all I can say at least in terms of Rangers content, is until we meet again, my dear sweet friends, when we return for game one of the regular season, come October. I'll be here afterwards to talk about that game. But as for right now, and as for the coming weeks, that is all I have to say. So thank you all so very much for watching this, this series, this postseason and this overall season of the Rangers videos. I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day from now until we are back. But as for right now, that's it. As always, go Rangers.